All right. Uh, the next assignment is going to be the heavy lift assignment, where we're going to be lifting a box. Now, you can modify this box into a ball if you want to. You can turn it into a sack if you want to, but nothing other than that. Okay, it's either a box, basically this size, you can make it more square. This is a rectangular photocopier box with lots of paper inside of it. Um, I think it weighs, I don't know what it weighs, approximately 50 pounds or something like that. Let's see out here. It's a lot. It feels it feels like about it feels like about 50 pounds. So um, so what we're going to be trying to demonstrate in this assignment is the, a sense of weight. So we've already done a few assignments where we we started to introduce the idea of weight with well it's been all the way through everything that we've been doing basically uh, the ball bounces are all, are all about weight and gravity. Uh, once we started getting into the character stuff, the jump up and down, the run cycle, the walk cycle, we're trying to demonstrate the idea of weight with an up and down type of an action. And the idea here is that we have to understand that the basic theory behind weight is that gravity pulls everything down. It's, it's constantly pulling in a downwards action. So if I pick this up, if I hold it up here like this, and I let it go, it's, it's going to drop. It's not <coughs> going to stay hovering here in the air, right? So it's, it's going down, right? Depending on how heavy it is, will determine the speed at which it goes down. So if this was filled with helium, balloons, and I let it go, it would sort of it would drop the weight of the actual box itself, would pull it down, but it might go a little bit slower. So we want to try and describe the idea that this thing is heavy and the character that's lifting it is struggling against the weight and gravity to get it up. And so in order to do that, we have to incorporate a little bit more overlapping action, well, not overlapping action, although it's in there, but the idea of recovery with the bouncing action. So when we get the weight up into the air, there has to be a high point, just like in the ball bounce, but then there's got to be more of a pull to it that jerks it back down and causes the character to react to it. So we're going to start using the arms and the legs in order to demonstrate that. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll talk about some of the mechanics of, of the actual lift assignment and, and the things that I want you to do. There's going to be approximately uh, 26, 27 key positions that we're going to be looking at uh, throughout the whole thing and then breakdowns inside of that as well. Uh, in order to complete the entire assignment. So that's why I asked you to bring in about 30 sheets of paper because we're going to do little thumbnail sketches throughout the whole thing. Now, we discussed this in the, in the previous assignment, step up, step down, the idea of doing thumbnail sketches before you do your animation. And I just want to stress the importance of this aspect of, of your thought process and your planning in doing your animation. If you don't spend some time ahead of time before you sit down to animate, you're really going to waste a huge amount of time in your actual animation process because you're just going to be guessing as you go through and hoping that it turns out okay. And chances are it's not going to work out okay. So the planning stage is really the most important part. There, there are people all over the internet and professionals who have written books on animation that have, have reinforced the whole idea of planning ahead of time. Uh, some people will say that if you have a scene that's going to take you four or five days to complete, you spend your first day doing nothing but planning acting, trying stuff out, doing thumbnail sketches, researching, thinking about it. You don't even draw, really, aside from the thumbnail sketches. You don't animate. You just think and plan. And then once you've got it firmly established in your mind and on paper and thumbnail sketches as to what you're going to do, that's when you then jump into your animation. So that's the approach that I want you to begin to start thinking about. We're sort of in our overall process of the way we've been going through things in, in our animation class, uh, you'll recall from the beginning of first semester, uh, I was dictating everything to you to do. I was saying, do this, do that, here's the way it goes, this is the place that it's supposed to be, here's the timing that you're supposed to use, this is where your in-between goes. I was dictating all that stuff. And then we started to phase out of that, and I started to roll some of the responsibility of what was happening in the animation over to you. I was saying, well, you come up with the timing, what the timing is going to look like, and you decide whether or not you're going to do this. And once we started to get into the character stuff, we, we went back to the idea that do this, do this, do this, and then all of a sudden I went, okay, now it's your character, you chose what it is that your character is going to do and how they're going to do it. And so we're, we're in that realm now where uh, on this assignment, I am actually pushing everything over to you. I will give you the basic mechanics and the things that are required within the animation, so I'm going to direct you as to what your character has to do. But the way your character actually does the end result of it will be up to you. Your character can struggle very hard with it. Uh, they can find it fairly easy, but it still shows weight. 
um, the way the character tosses the, the object onto the, the shelf is totally up to you as well. Right? So your approach as to how you get this box up off the ground and into the character's you know, balance point and then transferring it up onto the shelf and then recovering out of it, that's completely up to you. They just have to follow those basic actions. So um, I'm just going to pull this chair over here. Actually, I'll use this chair instead. This chair is better because it's a slightly higher chair and uh, it'll work better for you know, the way we're going to put the box up onto this object. So you're going to need some sort of a, a cube of some sort that's going to represent where this box is going to go. So just create a cube as your background off to the side and have your box sitting approximately this distance. I mean, it can be a little bit further away if you want it to um, in order to, to get the idea that this thing is, is moving. Now, a few things before we start. That when we get ready to lift this box off the ground, we have to understand that when you're lifting it, you have to be in a proper position to lift it. And so we were joking before about lifting with your legs. There, that's one way of doing the lift is using your legs and straightening out your back. Uh, the other option is to roll the box up so that when you go down into this position here, you actually pop the legs first and then you roll up with the body. It puts a lot more strain on the character's back and it looks a little bit more difficult, but it'll still see, achieve the same effect if you go into the, the main primary pose after that. But one of the other things that we need to understand is that when you're lifting the box or the ball or the sack, is that you have to lift it from the center. Right? So when you get over to the, the point where you're going to be lifting, understand that the center of gravity for this box is right through the center point right here. So from this point here down to the ground, that's the center of gravity. And we have to grab it at that point. So when you come over here and you grab the box, you have to grab it at the center. You can't grab it at the back here and expect to lift it, and you can't grab it at the, the other side and expect to lift it. So come on up here. We'll just we're going to do a little demonstration for us. What? Right. Yes, you. Let's have a hand. <laughs> oh. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to just bend down and I want you to grab the box at this back corner here and try to lift it. Just back here? Yep, right there. Lift it up. It's not, it's not going to work, okay? That's because the weight, when you, when you lift it at this point, stay here because you're going to do more. When you lift it at this point here, that becomes a fulcrum point, right? And so the weight transfer now goes to the front edge here. Now when you lift it at the back, it's just going to flip over. No matter how tightly you try to grab those back corners, try it again. Grab it as tightly as you possibly can. It's not going to work, right? So now what I want you to do is do the opposite. I want you to take the back corners back here, and without using any part of your body to support it, I want you to grab the back side. Lift it. See, the same thing's going to happen, okay? It creates a fulcrum point on the opposite side. So grab it in the center now. And now you can lift it. Okay, so that makes sense. Now try it again. Put it down. Now this time what I want you to do is I want you to back up a little bit. Not just a little bit for right there. Okay. Don't move your feet. Pick it up. From the center? Yep. That's not great. No, you can't drag it towards you. It's got to stay out there. I'll put my hand here. Just put your hand underneath the middle point. We're here and here. Okay, okay lift. I can't even get to it. <laughs> okay, get your fingers under it. Here. Okay, there. Get your fingers under. Okay, ready? Go. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. <laughs> okay, so there's the other point is that center of gravity is really important because when you place your personal center of gravity over here and you try and lift this box up off the ground, the problem is that the weight of the box has to be counterbalanced on your body. So in order to do it, You'd have to throw your butt way out in order to do it, but the length of your arms is not long enough to, in order to do that. So now get into a position where you're comfortable with it. Yeah, get your fingers underneath. You. Okay. Okay. So that did you notice what happened there? When he lifted it, the weight started to go forward a little bit, and he had to pull it in towards his body. The path of action on the lift was actually going this way. It was going on a diagonal because he had to pull it in in order to get it up. Now get over right over top of it. Put your leg, feet on either side, okay? Give enough space so that you can put your fingers around it. Okay, bend all the way down. Okay, now you can try to lift it. Can you get your fingers up? No. Sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. So, put it down, but keep your fingers underneath it. So, now bend your legs. Okay, so now, see the path of action on that one? 
path of action is going straight up here. Notice that the direction his arms are, the shoulders, okay, put it back down again, bend all the way down. You gotta keep your fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna make it work here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Get your feet on either side. Okay, now put your put it down and bend over. Okay, so notice there's weight back here on this side here. And then there's the line, the center of gravity is running right through his arms here. So when you lift it, notice where his knees and his feet are, they're all in line. Okay? So now it makes it easier for you to lift it. Okay, you can put it back down again. I know it's hard. <laughs> I just didn't want to work up on so I it. Okay, so our mechanics on this have to be that we have to be on top of the box. So when your character is standing in their start off position, we're going to start off with an attitude at the very beginning. The character has to have some sort of a, a way of perceiving the way the box is and their personal attitude towards it. So you can have a character that's very cocky and sure of themselves, or you can have someone that's very tired and timid for someone who just really doesn't want to lift the box. So you have to reflect that in the attitude of the pose. We started to introduce that a little bit in the box, step up and jump down, where I wanted you to have the character go up a certain way and then jump down. We're going to introduce that as well through the body posture of the way the character is standing in front of the box. So when your character is standing in front of the box, whatever that attitude is, okay, I want you to then make an adjustment to the character's positioning in order to get them into the point where they can actually lift this box off the ground. Which means that most likely, character will have to take a step, step, to get their feet on either side, and then go down into the position where they're going to grab it, and notice where my knees are. Now this is a funny thing. When I did this demonstration with the class yesterday, I had, it was really bizarre actually, because all the girls sat on this side and all the guys sat on that side. It was like a high school dance. <laughs> so I just, I grabbed the people that were on this side first, and all the girls came up, and when the girls came up, they all held, they all went to the box like this. They had their knees together. Okay, and when the guys came up and did it, they put their legs apart like this and grabbed it this way. Okay? So the dynamics of it made it slightly different. It was more difficult for the girls to lift it because their knees were together and they put their feet in front like this. Okay, and they had to arch their back over further in order to grab it. So it made it more difficult for all the girls who were trying to lift, and the guys were having no problem. But once I pointed this out and I had some of the girls put their legs on either side like this, all of a sudden they were able to lift it a lot easier. So, this is the point that I'm trying to make here, is that if I just threw this assignment out to you and said, just go off and animate it, most people would just guess. Okay? You wouldn't actually take the time to try and lift something and figure it out. So that's why we're going through this process. Because I need you to start thinking about this stuff in a major way. All right? So, what we're going to do is in today's class, I'm going to get you guys to do some posing for me. Okay? We'll start off in the first half. You guys pose, and then I'll finish the whole thing off, just explaining all the dynamics of what we're going to do. So, you've got your piece of paper and a, a drawing tablet there to draw on. So what we'll do is we'll just get people to come up, and what I want you to do is I want you to assume an attitude. We'll just have three or four people come up and assume an attitude for this pose of how the character is going to approach it. So give it a little bit of thought while I'm talking right now, because I'll just randomly pick people out. So what is the character thinking when they're approaching the box, and how are they going to do it? So let's as we're thinking about the attitude that we're going to be doing, I'm just going to step through how the character is going to be doing this, just so you understand how we're going to approach it. So I want you to do thumbnail sketches. As each person comes up and they do the pose, the person is going to hold that pose, and then you'll draw for about a minute. Okay? So you all become life drawing models. But you don't have to strip down. So worry about that. Mm. Yay. <laughs> Who said ah? <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a character with an attitude, the way they're looking at the, the box, we're then going to step, step in order to get them into the position where they're ready to actually grab the box. So from this position here, we've got a step, step, and then what I want you to do is because we have a major action where the character is going down to lift up the box, to grab the box, we should put a little bit of anticipation into it, right? So remember I, I told you before that as a general rule, this is not an absolute, and you don't actually have to do it every single last time, it just depends on what you're doing. Um, Whatever the action is, whatever the size of the action is, you should have your anticipation be about one quarter the size of that. So if my action is going from here all the way down to here, I should have an anticipation that's about a quarter of the size of that going back. Okay. So in order to go down, I'm going to go up and back and then down again. Right? So we're going to have some overlapping action. You can exaggerate as much as you like or not at all. I mean, the other way of approaching it is to have no anticipation in it whatsoever. Your character's standing here, they step, step, and boom, they go down. 
It's like pressing an elevator down the go, right? But we're going to try and put a little bit of emphasis to it, get it built up. So we're always going to put an anticipation before we do the action on each part of this, right? Every part has an anticipation, action, reaction, right? Unless something blanks. I'll show you where that takes place. So your character is going to step, step, go over towards the box. Then they're going to go down, anticipate, go down, grab the box or ball or whatever it is underneath the, the edge of it. They're going to then anticipate by going down further, and then they're going to pull. So we can do two different types of pulls here. We can do the pull with the butt first, okay, where we're down in this position like this, and we can go like this, and then roll up. Or you can do the arch back, where we go down like this, and then once we've got it underneath, we can then go like this, pulling here. Okay, So that's going to require your, your pelvis to go in, and you're going to do this type of an action here. So your pull is going to be like that. Okay? Okay. So you have the choice of doing either one of those. Now, that's heavy, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> so here's the other option that I'm going to allow you to do within this. Is where you can, if you want, you can put a stagger in here. Or you can approach the actual lift itself in several different ways. If you want to show that it's very heavy, what you can do is you can make the lift actually very slow. You don't have to do it like a weight lifter. We'll discuss you know, weight lifting and stuff like that in next week's class, some of the dynamics of it, just to show you different ways of, of approaching a weight lift. But with this, I don't want you to do like that type of thing, okay? I want you to make it look as though it's actually heavy. So in order to do that, we've got to put strain on the upward action. So there are two ways that we can do that. One is make the lift action very slow, right? Put a lot of hard, straight lines on the character's arms to show that there's a pull there. So when the character goes down like this, and they grab onto it, and they go, Ooh, you've got this pull. They could even do it once where it doesn't go anywhere, and then they anticipate even bigger and go down, and then like this, okay? And get it up. The other option is to do what's called a stagger. A stagger means that what you're gonna do is you're gonna have this. Like that, okay? Now the way you do a stagger is, <laughs> the way you do a stagger is exactly the same way you would do the slow lift, where you would have your key position at the low point, and then you have your key position at the high point. You drop in all your in-betweens, and instead of shooting them all in sequence, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you go one, two, down, back down to one, two, three, Back down to two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six, like that. So you're actually jerking back up and down. So you'll get up, but every time you go up one, you go down one and then up two. Down one, up two. Okay? And it creates that feel to it. It looks really cool when you do it. Is that more drawings? No. Nope. Okay. Exact same number of drawings. You're just shooting them in a different sequence. Okay? So it's exactly the same number of drawings. So you can do that if you want to. Right? I'll leave that as your option. Once the box gets up, we have to go to a high point. Okay, So we're going to pull up to a high point, and then it's got to drop very dramatically straight down. And we've got to pop the arm. So when your box comes up to a point, you can have the arms bend if you want to, okay? but not a lot. Okay, the more you bend them, the more it looks like it's really light. Okay? So we can do a little bit of a bend to it and then it's going to snap down very hard. So your timing in here is going to be important. Okay, you don't want to come up fast and then go down slow, because okay, it has the reverse effect. So we go up slow, <clears throat> fast down like that. We also want to do a shoulder roll here. So we roll the shoulders and then boom, down like that. Pop the chest out in order to support it. We're also going to get leg bounce too. So when you come up, you could even lift the, the ankle or the heel off the ground a high point, and then we recover. So gravity's going to pull it back down, straighten your arms out, and cause you to do a little double bounce on there. Right? It's going to be a controlled double bounce, so it's not going to be like a trampoline type thing where your character's going that. Right? You don't want to do that. Because the muscles in your leg are fighting to keep that box up. Everything is fighting to keep it up. So there's going to be more tense muscle grouping in your upper thighs here. So when you get it up, high point, roll your shoulders over, pop it, boom, boom, and then that's it. 
right? Character is going to pause just ever so slightly, maybe half a second, a second, to recover themselves. And then what they're going to do is they're going to do a little pelvic push where they're going to come back like this and push and lift with one foot, step down onto the thing that they're, the platform that they're going to put it on. And then the character is going to recover out and away and step back and recover into their final position with a nice seaweed pendulum swing on their arms. Okay? And a little bit of the body as well. Right? So we want to try and get that effect throughout the whole thing. Seaweed is the primary thing that's going to be taking place. And I'll point that out as you guys are coming up and posing throughout the whole thing. All right? So those are all the different steps and the different options that you have to get this whole thing done. All right? So who wants to volunteer to be the first person to come up and do the attitude pose? No lifting involved in this pose. Attitude. Anybody got an attitude ready in their brain? I will do the first attitude then, all right? So be prepared to draw. So what I want you to do is, for this assignment, you're going to come up with your own character design. You be the character from your pitch bat, or your character from your step up, jump down, uh, brand new character, whatever you want to do. But in the drawings that we're going to do today, I just want you to keep the stick figures. Okay, you can use the proportions of the person who's up here or just create brand new imaginary type poses. But essentially, we're looking at this type of drawing here. Okay, very, very simple stick figures. Okay, and looking for line of action running through the body, S curves and C curves. And I'll point those out as each person comes up. Right? So keeping it very, very simple. Later on, when you go to animate your character, you can use these thumbnail sketches as a guide for the attitude of the pose and then put it into your own character. You may have to modify it. But also what I want you to do is I want you to exaggerate as well. So when the person goes into a certain pose, they're going to assume an attitude or a position with the pose. But when you go to draw the actual character, I want you to push the pose further. Okay? I don't want a replica of a human being lifting a box. I want it to look like a cartoon.